What is up, guys? Doubles back game of the brand new video. Today, we're going to be doing the Pyromancer on Conquest of Azeroth custom class World of Warcraft. This ends up being a crazy class baked in with meteors, dragons, extremely cool effects. One of the flashiest classes I've played so far and actually does good damage. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right in. <laughs> Okay guys, it is time to make another class, get it to 50, a class we haven't done before. I did just want to show a few updates though that they've put on the alpha that aren't on the other realms. And they all have to do with this character creation screen right here. As you can see, it's actually telling me if I'm Horde or Alliance next to all of my characters, which is pretty nice. It's also telling me if I have unread mail and if I have specifically unread mail from the in-game store, or it could actually be when it says store mail, it could be stuff they send you for free that is sent from like the servers themselves. So when they give you marks of ascension for some reason in the mail or runes or orbs or something like that, right? Could also be like a piece of dungeon gear where your inventory was full and they couldn't give it to you. So they sent it to your mail. So it's just really nice. I like that. I like knowing who has what on them right off the bat and i did check the other servers like if you go to the ascension realms you go to alar nothing like that yet right nothing like that there is this little sliding bar though so that makes me wonder if they're going to get rid of the dot char thing that you can do and just let you see all of your characters otherwise why is there a sliding thing uh but anyway what we're going to be doing today is making a pyromancer my friends and uh, i think you know it was very close pyromancer beat out going back on the tinker by one percent and that makes sense to me the tinker we only played the 16 it was a different era of these playthroughs but pyromancer is a class we haven't played at all yet and outside of pyromancer Romancer, we only have ranger which you can see i did make a ranger character but uh i don't know i, I just got done with the priestess of a loon playthrough in fact that this character is the reason i made that by the way she gave me the idea so i'm thinking let's do something completely different let's jump on the pyromancer let's be the gnome and uh let's name ourselves fire boy i guess oh my god it's taken all right Py really pyro boy is taken that name is not even good okay what's another fire word flame boy there we go all right guys the pyromancer gnome is created let's jump into it okay guys we are in right off the bat i'm seeing three spells on my spell bar and do we have anything in our general spell book things do tend to hide back here no actually no interesting okay so do keep in mind there is going to be the giveaway announcement at the end of this video and another giveaway for one more um outland travel book whatever it's called basically it gives you access to the alpha so i'll give out one more and i'll let you know at the end of the video how you can make that happen for yourself but for now we have one tree right now and that is incineration really nice name looks like we have a passive in the three spells i mentioned before so let's just start off with flame caster's wrath this is so long guys um okay causes your fire crits to give you a buff called flame casting creating a path of flames under the target and increasing your spell haste by 10 percent stacking up to three times up to 30 percent more spell haste in addition fire spells cost 40 percent reduced mana that's a blanket effect by the way but every time you cast a fire spell you gain something called over overheating this increases the cost of your fire spells by five percent but also increases your spell crit by five percent of your intellect and it also stacks up to well it looks like up to 10 times if you get to 10 stacks it'll cause your next fire damage spell to consume the stacks dealing 20 percent increased damage and stunning the target so there's a bunch of fire mage baked into this right off the bat right like i'm getting the vibes of uh that one talent that lets your fire blast stun people um i'm getting the vibes of the, the crit in general the hyper focus on crits and then it also says some abilities have an overheat effect that will trigger when that ability is used at 10 stacks of overheating allows 50 percent of your mana regen to continue while casting that's another talent that mana regen thing that fire mage has as well so this is very interesting but i am feeling like a fire mage right now and i think the main thing that we're all going to be asking ourselves with this character the entire way through is how different are you pyromancer from a fire mage and how do they possibly break up three specs of fire and actually make it interesting? You know, they didn't do a bad job at all on the one that was the lightning version, right? That guy was actually pretty fascinating. And that was only in the 1 to 30 alpha, if I recall correctly. Don't even know what they've gotten since then. Uh, but you know what? I have high hopes as a result of that. What else do we have, though? We have Ignite, 40 yard range, 1.3 second cast, burns the enemy for massive damage over 22 seconds. And this spell is castable while moving. If the target is in a path, 
Path of Flames. This ability will also strike every target in its path within 30 yards. Overheat effect, the spell is instant cast, strikes up to three additional enemies near the primary target, and that's it. Okay, that's very interesting. I can test that right off the bat, actually. So I need to find a way to crit. Let's see if we crit. Wow, that's too difficult. Like, look, well, maybe not. I can move. I can move, actually. I'm stacking overheating. I think I just keep attacking new things and I won't lose the buff. Oh God, no, I'm gonna lose the buff. Oh, it lasts for so little time. Okay, do we get the AOE effect? I got the stun. I think I did. I think it like refreshed it on everything. That's really interesting. Also, by the way, I'm literally moving as if I'm casting Scorch, but I'm putting a dot on my targets. Uh, that's a weird one. We also have Phoenix Blessing. Empowers nearby allies, increasing their intellect by 10% and mana regen by 15% for 30 minutes. That's a massive buff. What does it look like? Nice. Okay. I do like that. And then we have Scorching Ray. 1.36 second cast fire a beam of flame doing fire damage and increasing spell haste by 10 percent and fire crit by one to whatever for 20 seconds this effect can stack up to four times okay let's see because the tooltip is bugged cannot use this while moving unlike the other one though so it's just a castable it looks like it wouldn't be you think ray and you think it's going to be like something that you can hold a channel all right i have the flame casting buff you can see i have the scorching ray buff and it looks like it's 40 percent spell haste and uh okay 12 12% fire crit once it's stacked four times. That is 3% every time. That's actually good. This one lasts a long time. And I can now Scorching Ray and Ignite, and I'm building up that overheating every faster. But it's it's tumultuous, right? It's a two-second buff, guys. It is a two-second... Look at that. A two-second buff on overheating. If you switch targets, you have even a little bit of downtime, it goes away. But if you can make it happen and you overheat, it looks like you're going to be extremely strong. With the other buffs, I mean, I get 10% spell haste, you can see. 50% now and 12% crit. 50% spell haste, 12% crit, and that takes no skill to make happen, by the way, and I'm level 2. So we really need to keep this in mind for the remainder of this playthrough. One of the ways you can make something traditionally bland really good is by making it really, really strong. And I don't know if Pyromancer will be traditionally bland, and in that regard, I mean, it's very mono-themed. It's just fire. We have destruction, incineration, and flame weaving, but what is that going to do? How does it differentiate? How good is it going to feel? and how thematic will each one feel. These are things we're going to have to figure out along the way. It could, though, be that you don't really feel that different uh, at all, and maybe one of them's the AoE spec, one of them's the single target spec, one of them's better for PvP. WoW is very notorious for doing that kind of class design, so we'll have to figure it out. But of course, we're not going to be doing it in Dunmarogue because it's obviously slow. It's a much slower zone. It's also not very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to look right now for my scroll of... tell. Actually, I can search, right? Uh, teleport to Stormwind, and we'll go to Northshire and the Human Lands. Way quicker, way more fun. Steamroll to 15, of course. We'll get into PvP along the way and uh, jump into dungeons. Hopefully, we get into PvP um, outside of just max level and i'll see you guys in a bit when we get new abilities guys i just started playing this character a bit and i actually discovered this interaction that i just got on accident i'm level seven i got two brand new spells i'm already loving this class i'm just gonna play it out for you for a second and let you see why i'm not even gonna read to you the new abilities right because you'll see you'll understand <laughs> right here you're about to understand very quickly look what is that <laughs> what was that and it gets better, right? So if we don't kill everything super fast like I just did on accident, and we just pull everything, first of all, like, there it is. Look at that. And it procced again. There it goes again. I am level eight, my friends. First of all, I got Slagstone, and that's what you just saw. That was the massive bit of fire. Hurl a molten rock that uh, deals what seems to be a lot of fire damage. The target is then covered in slag for 30 seconds, causing fire damage done to them to deal bonus fire damage and slow their movement speed by 30%. This is big. It procs very similarly in action and uh, play style to something like Shadow Bolt off a of Nightfall proc. It's, it's very, very reliable. And uh, then you you might be asking okay but this has a 2.27 second cast how did you just instant cast it well i was curious too because i did it on accident when i first got it and that's apparently through this brand new passive slag shaping i feel like if you're from australia or if you're british or something right now this is a lot more funny to you than it is to americans but it's fine this says whenever your ignite effect deals periodic damage you have a chance to make your next slag stone instant cast and free 
And that's what you saw. It's absolutely crazy. Now, a spell you didn't see, though, because I had no opportunity to really use it yet, that I did just get is uh, my version of counter spell. It's called Spell Burn. 30 yard range, 15 second cooldown, instant cast. Interrupt a target for 30 seconds, generate a high amount of threat. If the target is in a path of flames, I also interrupt everybody within 30 yards. That is probably never going to matter, but you never know. You could have a bunch of casters. It could be in PvP, and a bunch of people just happen to be casting at the same time. You're going for the healer, but now you've just nicked like two other casters on the side of them. And that could really suck, right? It's, it's deafening. It's a big one, and I like that. Let's see if it has an animation. Okay, so it's as if you were to fire blast them or something like that, some kind of ignite effect. It does look like it should do damage, but that's fine. I like it. Here's the proc again. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, so we are leveling pretty fast, as it tends to be the case, and uh, we're playing a build that I'm pretty confident, at least it was in the 1 to 40 alpha, is strong. And uh, that's exciting, because uh, I want to feel strong, right? I've played plenty of classes that feel like they're just not damage-tuned recently, and I want to play something that's going to dominate. Alright guys, level 9. To Goldshire I go. We have plenty of quests we could do there to easily start leveling up and see what abilities we get along the way. Alright guys, basic mine quests complete. Turning in a shipment to Stormwind for Willy and Pestle himself, and level 13. Now, I've gotten my uh, Destruction Tree, and we got a brand new ability called Phoenix Breath. 15 second cooldown instant cast, puts Ignite on all enemies within 12 yards, and stuns them for one second and can be cast while moving. This is actually really broken, and let me explain why. First of all, Ignite lasts for 22 seconds, meaning that, uh, like in PvP, for example, like, that's it. Like, all I have to do is Phoenix Breath, like, one time. This is what it looks like, by the way. It's Blast Wave, but, um, just more. Like, there's a little bit more, I feel like, there. Blast Wave is, it's, like, slower, right? And less animation. Uh, but look at that. It's already basically off cooldown. I can use it while moving. It has a really annoying mini stun that's not applying diminishing returns. It's too short, right? It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous, honestly. Like, that's so good. I also got Cauterize Wounds, by the way. I don't know if I'll ever have the opportunity to use this. Though, in hindsight, um, Cauterize Wounds is actually 10 times better than I thought because you don't need a bleed effect to use it. You just need to be in execute range. So, in actuality, if you're in execute range, it's a free boost of 20% of your max health. That's a pretty good little heal, but it's a 20-second cooldown that basically takes a bleed off somebody. It also heals them for 20% of their max health, but you can only use it with an execute range that's a weird one right so if somebody's bleeding to death you can cauterize the wound and uh it's kind of like a mini last stand but they keep the health right that's kind of crazy by the way fun fact uh phoenix blessing actually applies overheating i didn't realize that so i can theoretically just spam phoenix blessing I will maybe run out of mana if I try this too much, but then I can get my fully heated buff. Of course, it doesn't last forever though, so you've really got to make this work. You got to time it properly, but yeah, that is possible. So I started off immediately trying some PvP, and in most matchups, it was actually a lot of fun. I went up against another Pyromancer, and we're just like spamming our massive meteor back and forth, slagstoning, and it was just a proc war. Nobody's better than the other for the outcome, but that was a whole lot of fun. There was also, um, a sun cleric in there that i felt like was part of like this fair fight and a tinker in there but they did unfortunately have what is still somehow op it was always op from the beginning days of the alpha a ranger which we haven't even tried yet it's the only class left but it is so op that through one ability it's basically capable of one-shotting regular geared players possibly a slightly above average geared player as well especially if the ranger attacking you has gear and uh so there was no point people were dropping out of the bg like flies because you couldn't actually play but what i did get to play when it was like pyromancer versus pyro and the tinker and the sun clerk that was really fun so i've been leveling pretty significantly i got into a couple dungeons and now we're in dead mines i'm level 31 and it seems like it's a big jump but it's really not when you consider the potion and the aura that i'm using i I did, however, get a bunch of really sick abilities, and I haven't even got to use all of them yet, so I do want to show that to you guys. I think this is where stuff finally starts to get good. But first of all, I got my Draconic Tree. I'll show you a spell right here. I have that giant meteor for great damage. I also want to show you guys this right here. I have Flame Orb. This is really nice. Look at that. And you can see it left a, uh, like a fire path. Apparently that slows people and allies get increased speed when they're in it. So it's not exactly what you would have expected. You would think it was going to do damage, but it didn't. 
Oh my god. Yes, that is so good. Wow. This is crazy. Okay, but we got a bunch of other stuff as well. I got Cataclysmic Revenge. If I go below 10% of my health, I prime myself to blow up, doing damage and knocking everybody back. So that's pretty interesting. I can literally be a suicide bomber if I want to. I absolutely love that that meteor is just instant cast. Now in the Draconic Tree, I picked up some stuff as well. Look at the meteor, so good. So Cataclysmic Breath consumes your breath charges, whatever that is, to unleash a powerful breath attack, dealing fire damage, based on the amount of charges consumed, okay. Draconic Fang, deal a mild amount of fire damage to a target, generate a breath charge, okay, could be cast while moving. This spell gives you dragon scales for eight seconds, increasing your armor by 120% of your intellect, reducing all fire damage you take by 15% and giving you 15% more speed, interesting. So Scorching Ray is good, but I almost wonder if I just wanna use Draconic Fang in PVP. I can move, it makes me better against melee, flows really well with ignite and all my instants, and potentially turns cataclysmic breath into a, you know, massive burst spell. That's what I'm assuming will happen. We also got flame step. I appear behind the target in a burst of fire. For the next 1.5 seconds, I leave a path of flames in my wake. Overheat, 25% reduced cooldown. Very interesting. I also got this really unique spell. I found it in my general spell book, Dragon Tongue. And if I get a red whelp scale, it allows me to speak and understand the draconic language, the language of dragons. Interesting. I mean, that's just flavor. You could make like a, I could see a guild, right? And they only allow people uh, that speak in this language. It could be troll, you know? Um, it's mostly for fun. I like that kind of flavor. Melt Lock. Magically unlocks treasure chests. Wow, okay, I have pick lock. That's really cool. All right, I'm liking this, man. All right, and that's it. And uh, we actually got to 35 somehow by the end of that dungeon, which means we might as well just take a look at the first row of talents. Okay, so in the destruction tree, melt bindings, two minute cooldown, 40 yard range instant. Free an ally from movement speed reduction, root or freeze effects, make them immune to them for three seconds. That's really interesting. It specifies an ally. So can you cast it on yourself? Well, let's see. Yes. Okay, wow. It's kind of like using uh, Hand of Freedom. Again, we also got Burning Command, instant cast, two second cooldown. If you have a flame orb, it will move to the targeted position and leave a path of flames in its wake. In addition, it is healed for 25% of its max health and gains increased movement speed by 40%. Wow, that's so weird. But it does allow you to put a path of flames where you want one to be, on demand. And uh, that could potentially be very good, as many of these spells have a bonus effect if there's a path of flames up. Like Ignite, for example, which turns it into an AoE effect. All right, in the incineration tree, Magma Molder increases the crit strike damage bonus of Slagstone by 100%. So that's basically my really big instant cast spammable that procs off the ignite. That's basically that, right? Um, and so that will do more damage on crit. Stoke is next, four second cooldown instant, 40 yard range, does a really small amount of fire damage and adds 10 second to ignite. Okay and to all enemies around the person you do that on. Wow, okay, so that really synergizes well with Phoenix Breath, so you can quite literally stoke the fire, and uh, that's gonna be good for PvE. Flame Weaving has one choice, Blazing Speed. Draconic Fang now gives 10% movement speed stacking four times, wow. That is a PvP talent, boys. 100% that is a PvP talent. I will take that. I'm also gonna go ahead and take Burning Command right now. I just wanna test it. So let's see, basically the way this works, summon an orb. The orb is doing its thing. It's giving me um, a path of flames. I can move it now. And now it's going to start going the other way and leave a path of flames. Of course, you run fast in this. That's really interesting. Well, I should have a lot of speed, right? A lot of speed now. Okay, this is Draconic Fang. Is it Scorch? Wow, it's even better. And it gives me a little graphic now. That's pretty interesting. So how good is Dragon Scale? 120% of my intellect for armor. But so my armor is at 383. If I don't have the buff, what am I at? 292. Okay, big difference. Essentially, it goes from 8% physical damage reduction to 10%. That's just going to get better as I actually get gear, by the way. So that's already nice. And we have Flame Step. So it's literally Shadow Step, but uh, some fire on it. Okay. And uh, by the way, let's test that Cataclysmic Breath. So it looks like five is the maximum breath charge. And I can do this. Whoa, whoa, 724? Wait, look at my health. I only have 1,284 health. I don't have any gear. That's in that's insane. That is literally the combo, right? That is crazy. Guys, 
the abilities are getting really, really, really strong. They make a lot of sense too. I like it so far, but we have 15 more levels to go and quite a lot of talents to pick up along the way. So I found myself in an Oldemon at about uh, like 12.30 at night and absolutely nobody in here had any energy. And you could tell because, you know, occasionally somebody would AFK for like, you know, a good three minutes and nobody cared. We made it all the way through and, uh, you know, there's not much to commentate because it's just boom, boom, pow. The, the entire way with this class you're just spamming everything i've already explained you're using your aoe on demand you're spamming your little scorching ray ability building up that spell haste ooming by the way super quick you'll notice in these clips i have no mana at all and uh, so we have to find a way to remedy the mana issue that i'm definitely experiencing right now and there might be some tools but we were able to get all the way to level 44 in this old Amon, which is a massive massive leap and uh, there's a bunch of talented abilities that we can go for the thing is i'm gonna level a little bit more we're gonna make it all the way to 50 i think for this video we're gonna go over all of these talents in one fell swoop and create a build and then we'll jump into PvP and even a max level, a level 50 dungeon this time, just to mix it up a little and do something a little bit different, right? I think that uh, we can only do leveling dungeons so much when there aren't any BGs to mix it in with, right? Because no one's queuing because the gap's too large. Now we've got to focus on the max level stuff. In this case, level 50, right? So I'll get to level 50 and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, level 50 has been accomplished as you can see, and I wanna go over the abilities. I did already come up with a build that I like and we'll go over this as well, uh, but this is what I've got so far. We're gonna go over destruction, then flame weaving, and then we'll get to incineration where I've put the most points into. And I'll try to go over this quickly since there are so many, just like the last video. So in the destruction tree, we have slag bind, which is a root that does fire damage. Think a fire version of entangling roots. We have re Kindle, which uh, instantly regenerates 40% of your max mana. Think uh, another version of Innervate on a one minute cooldown. We have Scorched Earth, reduces the duration of Path of Flames by six seconds, but increases its tick rate by 50%. We have Flame Walking, Path of Flames now gives allies standing in it 2% increased spell damage for five seconds, stacking up to, let's just assume, 10 times. Um, Volcanic Ground, enemies in your Path of Flames take fire damage every tick. Lots of Path of Flames stuff here so far, right? And then we have Burning Vigil, teleport to the aid of an ally, like Intervene, reducing all damage they take by 30%. If they're in Path of Flames, reduce the cooldown of this ability by 35 seconds, putting it at 10 seconds. And that's a 45 second cooldown outside of that with an instant cast. That's really good. We have Volcanic Shell, uh, put a shield on an ally, reducing all damage they take by 40% for nine whole seconds. They also don't take pushback and they regen 25% more of their mana while casting. We also have Flame Wake, a channeled 30 second cooldown ability. Over the next second, you unleash flames, creating a path of flames and a line ahead of you. And enemies further toward the end of the line take increased damage. Interesting. Wow. We have Fire Lord's Mandate, consume the Phoenix Blessing buff, replacing it with Fire Lord's Mandate. This increases all magic damage dealt by 5% and spell haste by the same amount. Interesting. Another buff. Wild Magic, dealing fire damage, grants you a stack of wild magic, increasing all damage dealt by 2%, stacking up to 10 times. Every stack gives you a 5% chance to explode whenever you deal damage, losing all stacks, and suffering 40% of your max health as fire. There's just so much. We have Fire Power, right? A 45 second cooldown instant cast that empowers all enemies in path the flames for 10 seconds they get 40 percent more movement speed and all of their attack spells or abilities can consume the effect to become instant and have no cost wow that is like an absolutely insane effect actually if it didn't make sense the first time essentially what this does is makes it to where everybody in your party or your raid per se uh will just be able to cast everything with no cast time like wow burning crescendo two minute cooldown increase your crit by eight percent crit damage by 20 percent and every two seconds you gain another stack of this effect so it keeps getting better 16 24 32 right and then uh its duration is not refreshed but it goes up to five so that's really interesting Interesting. And then lastly, Phoenix Rebirth, bring an ally back to life. Okay, you need an Essence of Fire for that. Uh, Slag Forge, critical strikes with fire spells, melt your target's armor, reducing it 
by one and granting you and your nearby allies that much armor. It probably is not one. That's probably a tooltip bug, but that's fascinating. And also, I think that comes um, actually from like a, um, a cataclysm dungeon. And we also have flame spill. 12 second cooldown channel instantly create a path of flames after two seconds of a delay any enemies in the area take massive fire damage and are stunned for three seconds okay and we have lastly concussion slagstone stuns for two seconds that's really cool although i feel like anything with slagstone should be in the incineration tree based on some stuff you'll end up seeing but yeah this seems very powerful right what's the theme of destruction um it seems to be path of flames actually it seems to be everything in here has something to do or seems to revolve around the concept of path of flames you have some random stuff at the end here at slagstone that I don't really like being up there necessarily, but I guess it's fine. We'll figure out what people come up with. But yeah, it's basically Path of Flames. And then in the Flame Weaving Tree, far less abilities compared to the other ones, right? We start off with Descender. This reduces the cooldown of your Flame Step by 60%. That's my Shadow Step, right? And uh, also makes it to where it no longer leaves a Path of Flames. Maybe you wouldn't want that. Um, we have Dragon Fire, 8 second cooldown. The main thing about this, it's instant cast for crap damage. However, it restores 5% of your max mana when used. And if you use it at Execute range, you reset the ability. That's really, really good. You have Burst also, 12 second cooldown, 10 yard range. So Flame Weaving, very, very short range stuff, right? It does mild fire damage, but it gives you a Breath Charge. And we know that the whole point of this seems to be to stack Breath Charges to get off a massive Cataclysmic Breath. The, massive in the sense of Deathwing himself. And then you blow somebody up, right? So that's the point of this spec. We also have Destroyer's Maw. 14 second cooldown, another 10 yard range instant cast, consume an ignite effect to deal some damage, a lot it seems, and generate two breath charges, so more breath charges right off the bat. Fiery Momentum, burst ability now consumes blazing speed to deal additional fire damage and stun the target for half a second per stack consumed. And we have Phoenix Brand, mark an enemy for 8 seconds, at the end of the 8 second duration they get fire damage dealt to them and everybody around them, and also deals additional fire damage to all affected enemies over the next 8 seconds, so it's instant damage plus a dot to everybody. Uh, if the target is marked by Dragon Fire, which is that other spell we read down here, um, they also suffer more damage damage and will be stunned lots of mini stuns in this guys lots of mini stuns we have petrifying visage right one minute cooldown instant cast you produce a terrible image of a draconic maw dealing tiny amounts of fire damage and stunning your target for two seconds so another mini stun and more mini fire damage actually it's really weird burning breath 10 second cooldown consumes your breath charges to unleash a powerful breath attack upon an enemy target afflicting them with a more powerful version of the ignite effect that gains damage based on breath charges so now you have a a big dot right so we have you know cataclysmic breath big damage and then we have burning breath big dot probably better for pve but okay and then lastly fire streak burst once again what is burst i have no idea oh it's this ability right here okay it just straight up generates a breath charge and uh 12 second cooldown burst generates another breath charge if your target is affected by ignite and they always will be dragon's wrath increase your spell crit by 20 percent for 15 seconds on a one minute cooldown wow and draconic aegis shield an ally absorbing damage from any source if the shield lasts nine seconds the target regains 40% of their max mana, assuming you don't want to take any damage, right? That's like, that's the idea. You don't want to take any damage, and you just get 40% of your max mana. That's a really good thing for PvE as well. Flame Weaving then seems to be a place where you're going to want to burst, right? But there seems to be some just damage over time support in the Burning Breath later on. And uh, it seems like the entire PvE rotation will just completely center around Breath Charges and getting your dot off and then going for the Cataclysmic Breath and then getting your dot off, you know, stuff like that. Lastly, guys, we have the Incineration Tree. So we have Cataclysmic Ray. Four stacks of Scorching Ray will make my Scorching Rays now strike more than one target. But that has a cast time and I can't use it while moving. So I went for Explode, which basically allows me to consume my ignite to stun my target for two and a half seconds and that's pretty neat i like having an on-demand stun on something that i'm always going to get up anyway we also had the choice of burning embers which makes our interrupt apply ignite and also increase the tick rate of ignite by five percent or slag barrage consume all of your scorching ray stacks on a 30 second cooldown with a massive cast time to hurl a sphere of molten slag at the target enemy for every stack consumed and it's supposed to do huge damage and slow the target as well 
And then we have Apocalypse. Fire damage just straight up reduces fire resistance on your target by 5% up to 15% because it stacks three times for 20 seconds. At three stacks, subsequent applications will refresh the duration and deal bonus fire damage. So just by taking this, you get free damage. I mean, it's just really good. We also could have gone for Firebomb, 20 second cooldown, launch an explosive sphere of flames, and it does big fire damage. It also consumes flame casting stacks to do 50% more. We also add Comet Storm, more AoE. This makes our Meteor empowered, increasing its range by 400%, damage by 15%, and giving it no cooldown, up to four uses. Everburn, increase the duration of Ignite by 10 seconds, passive right. And then what I took, which is Raise, your Slagstone ability can affect two targets. In addition, the chance to trigger the slow effect from Slagstone is increased by 10%. Slagstone, if you remember correctly, is the instant cast I'm getting off the Ignite procs. It's everything the build I'm playing right now is built around. I'm essentially trying to get everybody into a clump and just start spamming the Slagstone and dots on everybody. I will also try to spam Draconic Fang. You can see I did go into Blazing Speed in the Flame Weaving Tree, which gives me 10% speed up to 40% speed just for casting. But I have to be in melee range, and that seems to be the biggest issue. So when there's a lot of healers and you don't have any support, which has happened already, I can't play, right? And so we've had those issues as well. So I really like the raise. We also have Quick Burn, which we took. This increases the tick rate of my Ignite by 50%, but reduces its duration by 50%. So it's a quicker, hopefully stronger, better effect for PvP. Wildfire, deal fire damage to an enemy and everybody around it. And if they're affected by Ignite, it does even more to everybody nearby. We have Force Blast, the missiles from Slag Barrage, which was all the way down here, remember, consuming Scorching Ray for a massive meteor. Those missiles will now do 40% more damage and knock your target back. Blaze, I almost took this one. It's another fire dot, but it actually scales with ignite. So you can have double massive ignite effects. It also triggers the same stuff. And then lastly, guys, we're getting through it. Fireball, called on a meteor on everybody with ignite on them. The meteor deals fire damage to the primary target and everybody else. I mean, it just feels like every spell is doing the same thing. Are you guys getting the same thing from this? Like, I'm not upset because when I play the class, I feel good. But I won't lie, it's really going to be hard for them to make a Pyromancer with 70 different options because it's a Fire Mage, right? That's what it does. Uh, and I do feel like as I read through these, they bleed together and everything feels the same. Is it going to play like that? Maybe, maybe not. I can't really say off a of first time, but uh, I, that is my first impression, right? So we have another one, Melt, a channeled ability that does fire damage, consuming Ignite for more damage. More of the same. Slag Foundry, casting Slagstone, will uh, grant you a stack of Slag Bellows for 30 seconds, and they don't tell you what that is. Wreath of Flames grants offensive fire spells a chance to increase spell haste by 40%, and Magma Spike, just summon a pillar of magma below your target for damage on a 15 second cooldown i took flames of the fire lord though two minute cooldown and i straight up just get 30 percent more crit and 35 percent spell cost reduction i also get immunity to stun silence stun by the way not just silence and interrupt but stun silence and interrupt effects and 20 percent reduced damage taken i can also use it while stun silence or interrupted it's just really good for pvp so that's what i'm gonna go with guys all right guys we are in oldemon level 50 of course so everything is scaled up to 50 for me and uh it's time to test our damage, see how we compare with other people, and just uh, see how smooth the rotation feels. All right, guys, this is a pretty good pull to showcase the damage. So it looks like I can do this. I put my ignite up. I can then summon a meteor, instant cast that, and what's my damage? How am I losing to somebody? But it is pretty good damage though, right? I am using the Scorching Ray for PvE. You can see I used about 1600 mana with that pull. That's a lot, right? Uh, but I did come in first place and not by a small margin. So my damage is really, really good. Mostly Scorching Ray, then Ignite, then Slagstone. It can be way more heavily tilted in the uh, favor of Slagstone if I get the procs, right? So that's a proc right there. That's a proc right there. You can see it hitting everything. My damage is ridiculous, dude. Here's another proc and it's dead. And you can see why I chose the one, uh, the talent rather, to make Slagstone hit more than one target. You can see why I'd want that, right? Like that just feels better, you know? All right, everything's ignited. That's of course proccing stuff. Let's Inferno. It's if you're fast enough, it can just never stop. You know, look at the damage we've got, man. 620 DPS. People weren't joking when they said that uh, Pyromancer was really good right now. Oh my god, it just keeps procking. Dude. 
This damage is ridiculous. We're literally missing a DPS, but I might as well count as three at this point. I'm actually glad we were able to test the build the way we were on these first few pulls because my entire group just randomly disbanded. One DPS went AFK. They said three minutes. They took seven or eight, and then somebody just vote kicked them. Uh, it was three to one. And uh, apparently, everyone else left too. And the server just DC'd. What is my luck? Okay, we're back. So, okay, I know that I am basically top tier DPS. It's extremely simple and fun to play. I'm shooting out massive meteors constantly and doing absolutely absurd damage. And I think I can upkeep my mana. There's a bunch of choices in there if I needed them, but I could also just drink. We could just go back to letting me drink, you know, in between some pulls once in a while. Uh, I think it'd be worth it for this level of DPS. I want to jump into a BG, though, and just see how we do. I do want to point out, even though I'm sure you guys could figure it out on your own already there are plenty of people twinking on the alpha it's not really something i want to do yet if i want to do it at all i probably want level 60 to be the thing before i even try you know when it comes to that kind of stuff but some people have been getting a lot of enjoyment out of it they are literally playing the same character from the 1 to 30 to the 1 to 40 to the 1 to 50 alpha and perhaps continuing on and trying to get the absolute best tweet gear for every single bracket i don't get it again because there's no one to play with man but um you know the world would be a boring place if everybody was the same so random battlegrounds hopefully it pops soon and hopefully we can test the fire build and hopefully it does just as well in pvp as it clearly does in pve So this guy one-shot me, and I asked him how he one-shot me, and I think I'm showing it to you guys right now, just the damage. He told me apparently this one talent I glossed over because you couldn't tell from the tooltip that it would be good. Apparently, it's completely busted. And so this BG I'm in, I once again can't play it. It's like, it's so crazy. It's actually 2v3, but they have a guy that has the literal capability to kill me in less than three seconds. That's the truest one shot I may have ever claimed to have happened to me ever in any video I've ever done. And on top of that, they've also got a Venomancer, which can heal him. Never mind, Venomancer and uh, maybe the Primalist comes too? Nope, don't think so. Pulling me to him every time is so annoying. I'm draconic fanging. Oh, I can heal with that thing. I forgot. Look at the damage. That was a draconic fang cataclysmic breath. Oh my God. He's going to die. I think I got him this time. Yes. Oh my God. He was so mad. He res. You know what? You know what I'm talking about when they res super fast. And you know, if you're spam clicking the res now, you're like, oh my God, I hated that fight. I could have got that little flame boy. I'll take it though, man. I just wanted a solid fight. I finally got it. One shot by Rangers. One shot by a broken ability that I wish I could be trying right now. Where the heck even is that one in here? Flame wake. It's the fourth tier of a completely different tree. I couldn't get it and do any of the other things I'm doing. So I think this guy literally went for what he went just because it's broken on the alpha. All right. That's all I needed to get from that. That that's just it. You know, they also do this thing, guys, where they purposefully don't cap the flag. Like you're at that point. You're like, you know what? I know I have an advantage on you guys. I know you're not having any fun and I just want to prolong that at your expense because that's what I like to do. And also I play more than all of you as well. And then you just get this bad, it's like a bad rap and then they just give us all a bad name. All of us guys that play too damn much get a bad name because of stuff like that. But anyway, guys, I'm just playing, but also it's kind of true. I'm going to real quick test that one talent before we end this video. I just want to see the damage on a dummy. I'll just pick some random stuff until we get there, right? Uh, because I am genuinely curious. It, it did not look based on the tooltip alone because a lot of the tooltips are messed up. They're not giving me all the information yet. But it didn't look like, based on the tooltip alone, that it was actually that good. So it seems I've been duped. Duped by Ascension themselves. Over the next second, you unleash flames in front of you. It doesn't tell me how much damage any of these flames do. So again, no reason for me to believe it's any good. But if I go up to this and I do it, let's see. Oh my gosh, it just bursted for how much damage was that? 2,000 damage, it's still going. 2,300, 2,004, 2,006, 2,007. Oh my god, it just keeps going. That's a ridiculous spell. 
the path of flames that it creates does so much damage. And you have to think that, you know, you, you go in there, you pop the flame wake, and you just immediately start doing exactly what that guy did to me. You know, that is insane. But okay, guys, let's go ahead and do the giveaway from the last video. I've got two, um, basically access to the alpha little books to give you guys. I'm going to go ahead and randomize all of the comments. And as long as you did what I asked you to do in the last video, if your comment is picked, you will win it. And I will mail everything to you before this video goes live. All right, guys, YouTube comment picker V2 I'm doing right now. I've got the link already ready to go. Once again, as long as they follow the criteria, whoever the first two people I pick that did it, will win let's see okay lester would love to play venomancer they seem really fun his name is soy boy <laughs> on a lark why did i have to fall for this one why why that one the soy boy one uh but okay man part of me is convinced that's not even him and it's a random person he just wants me to send this into the void but you know what he is the winner so soy boy here's your conquest of azeroth travel guide Hope you enjoy the Venomancer class, man. There you go. One cent, one to go. All right, pick another winner. Okay, Daemonian, I believe that's how you say that. Would love to try Ranger, the only thing I haven't done. Now I feel bad. Also happy you're enjoying Lost Ark as well. That's the, okay, thank you, dude. Thank you, because you know what, guys, to those of you that aren't watching those, go watch it, go play it, man. Those videos are actually doing well. I know it's not showing you guys downvotes anymore. They're not getting downvoted. Those things are at like solid 95% plus um, like uh, like rates, right? That's a good sign if you don't know from like a YouTuber's perspective. If you're above 90%, you feel good. If you're above 80% on controversial stuff, you feel okay. If you're above 95%, you're basically 100% doing the right thing. Lost Ark videos seem to be going good, even when they don't get the best views, but a lot of them are getting great views. So I'm happy you like it, man. He also said Daemonian is his in-game name on the seasonal server. So that is the LR server, exactly what I asked for. Let's go ahead and send you your stuff. Okay, so I literally copy and pasted the exact way he wrote his name. So I hope he didn't misspell it or anything. Uh, but there is your Conquest of Azeroth travel guide. Hope you enjoy playing the Guardian Mate from McDoubles. All right, man. Daemonian, congratulations, guys. Both of you, Venomancer player, Guardian player to be. Now you'll be able to play the Alpha with me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. Oh, and that's not even it. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Leave an XD somewhere in your comment and your in-game name. <laughs> as the fat Taran guy gets in front of me and blocks my scene. Listen, leave your name, obviously your in-game name on the Alar server and give me an XD. And if I pick your comment in the next Koa video that we do at some point, probably the Ranger, no, it'll be the Tinker in fact, you will get access, you'll get my last book to the Alpha. But I hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one. Big doubles out.